right guys, we're gonna be replacing my uh, header today. Um, we got a really nasty header leak. Um, haven't opened it up, but I believe it's cracked underneath. Um, so we're gonna replace it with a uh, pace setter header. Um, I've heard a lot of good news about this. Um, so let me just go ahead and show you what, what I got here. Got this header off of a company called uh, Caride, Car ID, I don't know how you would pronounce that. Uh, really good price, it's $213, uh, that's just the shipping costs. Uh, so this is the header for a 95 Wrangler. Uh, it'll cover a few year Wranglers, uh, this is for the four cylinder. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. What this kit comes with is, uh, of course, the new header, the gasket, okay, and then it also comes with the uh, downpipe, and then all the extra nuts and bolts that you'll need to bolt this flange together and then that flange as well. Um, I'm not sure who makes a square flange, and many people have said you know they couldn't find it. I'm gonna go ahead and go a different route. I'm gonna cut it off and weld it with. Uh, With a pipe reducer, I'll just put a two inch on on this guy. It's actually uh, two and a quarter outside, and then my other one is two inch outside. So I have to get a reducer from two and a quarter to two inch. So go ahead and uh, replace that. But before I weld this guy on, I need to get that header installed. Find out the location of where I want to do the final cut. Cut it down, and then I'll weld this guy in place. All right, guys. So crawl up underneath your Jeep. You're gonna want to cut this uh, cross member off, okay? All that is is uh, getting the saws all out, cutting the exhaust tubing right there, and then you're gonna cut it right below, somewhere in, in below where your uh, O2 sensor goes into. I've already removed the O2 sensor, and that's uh, easy to do. You just need to get a uh, and open in a channel wrench or pliers or something and just break it loose. I believe it's a three quarter inch bolt. Um, so that'll work as well. Uh, and then you're gonna just wanna cut both sections out. So uh, I've already cut the other side off. I'm gonna finish cutting this off. That's allow you to pull the header straight up through the top of the engine, okay? So once we get that removed, now we can move to the top of the, the engine. All right guys, so now we're gonna take the intake hose off really easy to do I've already taken it off but I just want to show you um, you're basically going to get a screwdriver underneath this right here pry open this whole thing will open up slide it off and then you can pull the other side off you don't need to do anything with that it'll just slide right off so the next part is this throttle linkage it's really easy to do you just have to uh, pry it forward okay you got that off and then some vehicles have this uh, other linkage, actually all vehicles, excuse me, there might be a third one here which uh, most YJs did not have this, which is your, uh, I believe it's your cruise control, the TJ started having that, okay? And same thing over here, you're just gonna uh, push it forward, a little hard for me to do, you, you wanna get that off as well, and then we're gonna remove um, this whole section, which is your intake out, and then we can get to your fuel roll and everything else. So let me go ahead and remove this uh, uh, throttle here, and uh, excuse me, TV valve, and uh, get m moving on. Okay, so to get this bracket off that's holding your throttle cable and your TV valve, it's one 10 millimeter bolt down here, and one back here, a little hard to see, one right back in there that you can get in through at this angle. And then there should be a third one right here, okay? You can remove those three and you can remove that. Okay, so next guys, you're gonna wanna remove all of your uh, wiring that's connected to your intake. And then there's also one um, vacuum line that's connected on the back side here that you'll need to connect, uh, disconnect. So you take that whole wiring loom, tuck it out of your way so it's not gonna fall into your project. Okay, so we'll just tuck it up here. Okay, then next, we're gonna go into taking uh, 
this vacuum line off, okay? And then uh, we can unbolt, or excuse me, this vacuum line, and uh, I think there might be one more vacuum line over here, and then we can unbolt the intake and pull it out. Okay guys, so you gotta remove these clips as well. Uh, there's C2 grooves on the sides there. Just get a small flat head, pry it in there, just to get that lip uh, out of the way, and then you can just, once one side's off, the unit will come off. So you're gonna remove those four. Okay, and I think now we're ready to actually remove the header, okay, or excuse me, intake uh, and header at the same time. So there's a series of, uh, I believe, eight bolts, um, 9 sixteenths, one there, one there, one in the middle, one underneath, two in the back, and then I believe one underneath as well. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the top ones now. So as you remove them, you're gonna wanna save this washer, okay? I've recently went through and put uh, lock washers in there just to help them from backing out, which has helped considerably because I did have a few of them back out towards the, uh, the cab. So we're gonna go and remove the rest of those. So before we continue removing the rest of those, I noticed that this, uh, um, what is that? Power steering um, unit needs to be taken off because there's one bolt here and there's one back there that are actually bolted onto your intake. So we gotta take the belt off. In order to do that, you gotta do, uh, I have another video on this, but you gotta take this uh, tensioner down here and remove it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take care of that now and get the belt removed. All right guys, so once you get the uh, intake removed, I went ahead and zip tied it back out of my way so I can get to what I need to get to. Uh, and uh, start removing all the bolts holding the exhaust manifold on. So I'm gonna take the one last bolt off. Once I get that off, I should be able to pull this whole thing straight up out of the engine and drop the new one in, bolt it on, and be on the day. Pulled it apart. It looks like the manifold got pretty hot. You can see the discoloration on both sides. I couldn't find a crack on it, but I did notice that the gasket blew out. And you can see exhaust blowing out right there. See the black? On the other side, there's nothing. And actually, it looks like a little bit right there is blowing out. So. That was my issue. But in any case, I got the new header. I'm gonna put those in. I'll save this just to have it. All right guys, so before you put your new gasket on, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you clean all this whole edge off of any debris, oil, whatever's in the way. And uh, you can actually see down there, that's where it was leaking. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean it, wipe it down with some uh, light sandpaper, and then Clean it up real nice, put my new gasket on, and put my header back in. Alright guys, so the first modification you had to do on this whole project, enlarge those two holes, the ones with the, that goes around the pin, roughly to about, I think it's about a half an inch that I did it. Um, they just don't want to go on, because the hole that they give you is 3 eighths, and uh, so I drilled them bigger, now they're on. Now I'm going to slide the header in its place and see if I can start bolting it on. Alright guys, so I got the the unit back in there, the header, uh, intake, and everything else back in there. Uh, I didn't show you how to do that only because it's the opposite of basically taking it out. Uh, one thing to note, remember to put your TV valve back on, and uh, your throttle cable, okay? And then make sure you get all these connections back in where they're supposed to go. And if you guys did disconnect your uh, fuel lines, make sure you put those back on as well and any vacuum lines that are connected to that. So let's get uh, underneath the, the vehicle and see about uh, bolting the, the cross member on. Now uh, that I got it fully uh, mounted over there, uh, bolts are tight, comes across the oil pan. You can see the uh, oil uh, drain there comes across, comes over to this uh, sleeve that I put on. I just gotta do the final welds on that sleeve and then uh, be done and be able to start it up. So this pipe that uh, the pace setter comes with is two and a quarter. I believe the stock pipe is one 
and three quarters or one and seven eighths somewhere in there. Um, but um, so I have a uh, two inch down to a uh, two uh, sleeve here and I'll just kind of weld it on the top and then paint it down and, and close the gap up. It won't be a smooth finish, but it'll do the job. So after I did my install, I noticed that the trans cooler lines were touching the exhaust. Um, so my solution to that was I actually got a pry bar in there and pried it away uh, about a quarter of an inch, maybe a half an inch, enough to, uh, it's hard to really tell from down here, enough to get some clearance so the uh, trans fluid, there it is, doesn't uh, bubble over. Um, so anyways, it's one thing to look at when you're finally done with your install. Uh, take a look at that and uh, tighten everything up and move, uh, move that over.